So now we're going to move on to the 2D CNN architecture for the Burson classifier with machine learning project I'm working on. And to recap, we have worked on 1D CNN model. And um, when we did the 1D CNN model, we essentially concatenated the additional features um, to the MFCC feature. So um, if we look at this image right here, we have the MFCC with dimension of 251 by 20. And then we have Chroma, for example, with dimension 251 by 12. And we effectively just um, you know, uh, concatenate the MFCCs and Chromas to create um, a feature that's uh, of dimension 251 by 32. And we can think of this as 251 rows and 32 columns. And when we have the 1D CNN, we, the filter is just sliding um, you know, in one direction from um, top to bottom. So when we are, now we're going to move on to 2D CNN. And there are actually two ways that we can think about um, how to implement the 2D CNN architecture. So the first one is uh, we can continue to concatenate the features similar to what we have done for the 1D CNN. And we can create a feature um, of um, dimension 251 by 32, similar to this one. But instead of having the filter moving only one direction from top down, we can create filters, for example, a three by three in this, in this case, a three by three filter that moves to the right and move down. So that's what a traditional 2D CNN architecture would look like um, in the case where if we have, for example, an image, right? And uh, we can consider each of these boxes as, for example, a pixel. And when we have the 2D CNN, we will have a filter of size three by three that's kind of shifting to the right and then to the uh, down below. But for um, our case, I am actually going to create a slightly different view of um, the different features. And I'm going to go over them right now. So this is what I want to do for the 2D CNN model. And we are going to use MFCC and RMS and spectral centroid and continents. And the continents have output dimension of two. So I chose these four because these are the four features that had the highest validation accuracy when we worked on a 1D CNN model. So I am just going to um, use these four features instead of experimenting with different combinations of different features. So when we have the MFCC, right, we have the um, dimension of 251 by 20. So we have 251, which is the number of frames because we have eight seconds and then 20 because we extract the 20 MFCC. So we can view this as 251 rows and 20 columns. And then for when we have RMS, we just have a dimension of one. So we have the 251 um, time dimension and then the one for the RMS. So to um, make the MFCC and RMS of the same shape, I am just going to repeat RMS 20 times um, so that effectively, um, you know, at each time step, we have 20 of the same RMS. So that we get RMS to the same shape as uh, MFCC uh, to be 251 by 20. The same thing for spectral centroid. And then for the continents, we have, for example, this is just from one example, right? When we have that one example, our dimension for the continents embedding is one by two because we have uh, one continent with two embeddings. So because our embedding output is of dimension two, so we have one by two. And then we can repeat this 10 times to make the dimension one by 20. Um, and then we can repeat this 251 times to, the, to make the dimension 251 by 20 so that um, the continent embeddings are of the same shape as everyone else. And then we can tile um, each of the four features so that uh, we effectively kind of stack them on top of each other. So we have the red one is MFCC. We have um, you know, 251 by 20. And then the blue one is RMS, 251 by 20. And then the green and then the yellow. So we have um, four different features all stacked on top of each other to create kind of this 3D, three-dimensional feature of um, shape 251 by 20 by four. 
So the reason I want to do this is when we are actually working on, uh, for example, an image using a 2D CNN architecture, um, the image actually has um, three different channels when we have a color image. The image has three different channels where um, each channel represents one color. So we have the red, green, and blue. So um, when we are working on an, um, you know, a colored image, it's effectively can be considered as if um, it's three of the same image stacked on top of each other with three different channels, three different colors. So here I am saying, okay, so I can consider it in a similar manner where I can have 251 um, number of frames and 20 features for each for each feature. And then I can stack all four of them on top of each other to effectively treat it as if the uh, model has four different channels. So that's what I want to do uh, when I uh, use the 2D CNN. And then how would the filter slide? So each filter would kind of look at all four stacks. So it will be kind of a little cube here at this corner, right? We will have a filter that's um, looking at this corner here and then sliding to the back and then sliding down. This is a little bit hard to visualize, but I hope it's not too confusing. Okay, so now that we know what we want to do to, with the fe features, I am going to implement it in um, Google Colab. So this is the same notebook that I've been using for the 1D CNN model. And, um, you know, this is the same stuff we should all be familiar with now. So I import the libraries, load the features and labels, shuffle the data and create the sample weights. So now I'm ready to create the 2D CNN model. And as a reminder, so now our uh, feature dimension is going to be different, right? So previously our feature dimension, the training was um, number of samples by 251 by 22, because we're just uh, putting the additional features as additional columns, but now we're uh, putting them as um, different um, channels. Okay, so I want to kind of show you how I would change this 1D CNN model that I created so that um, we can uh, create the uh, 2D CNN model that we want to use. So the first thing I want to do is um, uh, to, I want to see what kind of um, feature dimension is coming out of the first half of, of the model. So I am just going to copy the, uh, so this is still the 1D CNN model, right? So the 1D CNN model, we have the audio features, we have the location, and then we tile the location on top of the, um, not, yeah, we tile the audio features on top of the, um, uh, location to create the total features. So here um, I am going to create the audio features. So this is what I am just going to put here. So this is what the 1D CNN would look like. So we have the audio features and then the continent features is going to be uh, this one. So again, our audio features for train is going to be a uh, number of samples by 251 by 22, because we have 20 MFCC plus R one RMS plus one spectral centroid. And then for the continent features, um, we have the, I'm just going to print out the shape. So uh, for each example, for each sample, we have one continent, right? So it's going to be either Africa America, Asia, Europe, or unknown. So here is actually a one here. It's just being omitted um, with the NumPy here. So here we just have number of samples by one. Okay. And let's take a look at what the output feature looks like after we pass through this input uh, layer. So we can see here, this is the 1D, again, 1D CNN. And this is what the output, uh, the input would look like once we pre -pro once we process the um, features, right? So we have the uh, 22 audio features and then with the two um, continent embedding with output dimension two, with the two continent embedding um, concatenated, um, effectively we have 251 rows and 24 columns for each sample, okay? 
And what I want to do now is I want to change this so that we can effectively make this 3D shaped thing. Okay, and I am just going to put 2D. And to make 2D scene, then first, um, I would also still need, I'm just going to copy this whole thing as pre what we have above here, because we still need the audio features, the continent features, and all the pre-processing steps. It's just, um, they're going to change a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is I want to um, change the audio features, right? Because previously we we're just concatenating the audio features, but now we want to, um, first, we want to uh, make RMS and spectral centroid to be the same shape as MFCC. And then we want to tile the RMS and spectral centroid to MFCC so that uh, this becomes a 3D shape. So to do that, I am going to use um, here. I'm going to use mp.tile. And when I pass in mp.tile, I need to tell it uh, the dimension to tile it to. So the dimension to tile is two, two is, uh, is one by one by 20, because I want to basically repeat the um, RMS, which the RMS to 20 times. Okay. And then I also want to, so let's just print this out real quick. Shape. Right. So previously our RMS, Let's just print out the RMS shape real quick. So previously we have the number of samples by 251 by one. And now I have repeated the RMS um, dimension 20 times. So now our RMS is gonna take on the shape of number of samples 251 by 20, which is gonna be the same shape as the MFCC. I'm just gonna print out the MFCC shape here as well so that we can see. We can see that they're of the same shape. And I'm going to do the same thing for the spectral centroid. Okay. And again, I need to tell it what shape to tile it to. All right. We got tile. Okay. We need an extra parenthesis. Okay. So now, uh, let's just make sure that our shape is correct. Right, so now we have RMS, MFCC, and spectral centroid all of the same shape. I am going to just remove this debugging part. And what do I want to do now? I want to tile, um, I want to stack. There's lots of different terminologies and uh, I'm getting a little confused myself. So I first tiled them, so effectively repeated it 20 times for both the RMS and spectral centric. And then I want to stack them on top of each other. So I'm going to use mp.stack. And uh, let me just see and on axis. Okay, so let's try this. Right, so now we have basically stacked the MFCC, RMS, and spectral centroid, each of shape 251 by 20 on top of each other. So now we have, um, you know, we have created this, this stack of these three, the red, green, and uh, red, blue, and green. We have the MFCC, RMS, and spectral centroid, okay? And then what about the continents? So um, if I want to first, um, take a look at the continents. So um, here, when we pass through the embedding, right, we already know it's gonna have the shape of number of samples uh, and one by two, because we have one sample, uh, sorry, uh, one time dimension by two uh, embeddings. So to make the location embedding the same size as everyone else, we would need to tell it uh, first uh, 10 times, so that it becomes one by 20 and then tell it an, uh, 251 times uh, so that it becomes 251 by 20. Okay. So um, I am going to first, let's see. When we define the tau location embedding, I am going to first tell it 20 times so that we have one by 20. So 
what am I gonna do here is I am going to say x equal to and let me think about this is okay so um, basically we want to tell it to um, okay so we want to tell it to one by one by 20 and then we want to tell it again to uh, one by 250, one by 20, okay. And then we're going to, um, let me think about this. Okay, let's just try this and see what shape it, it comes out to. And I'm just gonna put it here and then I will pass in the um continent feature of shape okay what do i want to do here okay let's i am actually just going to try to run this and i think it's going to give me a um it's going to give me an error here but let's try it it did not give me an error but this is not the shape I was looking for. It is because I need to stack layers. I think this should be negative one. Let's see. Um, let me just print out this location in that first. Okay, what happened? Okay, so I accidentally tiled it 20 times when I should have just tiled it 10 times. So I need to divide by two because again, our output dimension for the um for the embeddings is is two already, so we only need to tell it 10 times. Okay, let's try this. And what happened? Okay, so now we have, yes, this is correct because so our uh, audio features have the shape of number of samples 250 120 and then our location embedding also has the shape of number of samples 250 120 okay and now what do i want to do i want to so the audio feature shape actually needs to be changed as well right because because we uh now have a three dimension okay and so now i need to add the third dimension and let's just print out the audio feature real quick I'm just putting everything in the comments okay something happened here audio features okay so that's right so we have audio features of 251 by 20 by 3 which is what we expected and then i am going to uncomment everything else to create and our location bedding is also um the correct shape Let's see if this worked right. So this is telling me, okay. So this is telling me that my um, location bedding and my, um, what's it called? The audio features are not of the same shape because my location embedding needs to be expanded to one more dimension. It should be 251 by 20 by one. Um, it's effectively the same thing. It's really just 
you know the the um, TensorFlow is is being a little bit nitpicky with um, with uh, the shape of 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 the stuff. So I am going to use um, tf dot uh, expand sims. I think it's called. And I need to pass in x again, and then the axis is a negative one. Okay, let's try this. Right. So now this has worked, and um, this is the same shape as as what we were expecting. We wanted a shape of two fifty one by twenty by four, and we have the shape of two fifty one by twenty by four. So now this is ready to be passed into our model. So I am going to um, copy this down into our model so that we can use it. Read this. Okay. So in our model, we are passing the audio features, continent features, and learning rate. And uh, we just uh, did the uh, created the features by uh, basically stacking the features on top of each other to create this 3D feature. And then I want to um, change the uh, layers. So now we're creating comp 2D. So I just need to change comp 1 to comp 2D. And then of Obviously, because it's come 2D, now the filters need to um, have a two dimension as well. And usually the filters are square. So I am going to put the first filter as 32 by 32. The same with the kernel size. And the same with the stride. It, it all needs to be 2D. And then uh, the name is going to be the same. And I'm going to keep the regularization the same. And then the max pulling layer also needs to be a two dimension. And okay, so the first, uh, so the first layer was created, and then I am going to do the same thing for the second layer. Again, everything needs to be two D, so I am just changing everything to be two D, and uh, I forgot to change this max point to two D. And the size needs to be 2D as well. And I actually want to add another uh, layer just for experimentation purpose. So I added, what did I add? All right, okay, let's see. Let's see. I have one, conf, one, max pool, one, second one, and then I have the third one, okay. Third, and I am going to keep the third one the same size as the uh, second one. And then we have the fully connected layer, the dense layer, and then the dropout, and then the classification layer. And then I create the model and then I compile the model. Okay, I think this is ready. I'm going to run it. And then I am going to run the visualization. This is the same thing as previously. So now when we create the features, we need to use what we um, already created up here because now we're stacking them instead of uh, concatenating them. Okay, so I am going to change this. And let's see. Yeah, the shape is what I expected, 251, 20 by by three, and then the same thing for the validation, but uh, we need to change this so that we're getting it from the validation key from the um, audio data frame. Okay, and let's see. Right, so we have, we're gonna make sure that our training and the validation have the same feature shape, which is 251 by 20 by three. Okay, and I set the set, uh, callback, and then I can just uh, call the model by, uh, we can build the model, build, call the build model function to build a model, and then I can feed, set the model, and uh, we can get our best epoch uh, using the callback technique by uh, finding the highest validation uh, weighted accuracy, and then we can visualize. So I'm going to run this, and something happened. Uh, what does this mean? What did I eat? Okay, let's see. 
something is wrong in our function. Oh, I realized that my filter actually should just be 32 and 64 instead of, yeah, I think that should be correct. Let's try it. Ah, so I forgot to change my conf. The second, the third one to count three and pull three. So they all have to have the different names. Okay, let's try again. I'm just rerunning all these. Okay. All right, so now the model has been created successfully and we can see we have three count layers followed by um, a max pooling layer. And we have the first comp layer is 32, and then the second one is 64, and then the last one is again 64. And then we have the fully connected layer, and um, then we have the uh, final dropout layer. So I am going to let this train for a bit, and uh, I will be back when this is finished training. Okay, so now this has finished training. It took about an hour and the best epoch was reached at epoch 22. And here is the um, uh, learning progression. We have the loss and the accuracy. And I went ahead and ran everything uh, down below for the evaluation. We can see the training accuracy was around 94% and the validation accuracy was around 85%. And here's the classification report. We can see that um, you know, actually for all three classes, uh, the uh, F1 score is pretty um, similar to each other. Comsan has a little bit less precision and uh, while EWAG1 has a little bit higher precision. And uh, we can also look at the confusion matrix here. So this one is certainly a little um, less performance. It performed a little bit poorer than the 1D CNN. 2D CNN is a lot more computationally expensive than 1D because the 2D took like an hour to train, whereas the 1D was very quick. But uh, the 2D um, actually didn't perform better than the 1D, which is very interesting to see. Um, but uh, again, you know, we're working with the uh, audio features here. Um, normally, 2D would uh, work um, better with uh, uh, images uh, alike, whereas the 1D works better with text and uh, audio features. So. And that could be one of the reasons, but um, yeah, that's it for this video. And uh, I hope you can tune into future videos as well.